Uh, honorable Amos, can you quickly, because you've raised the issues properly, can you use three minutes to speak to your motion? Thank you, the right honorable speaker. Mr. Speaker, we are in this house to do our constitutional roles and mandates. And one of the biggest roles a member of parliament to perform is the oversight duty. And besides also, we have, we have our rules that guide us. And parliament work through committees. All these committees that we are talking about can be ad hoc committee, select committee, standing committee, plus others that all of us know and are aware about. Mr. Speaker, once the committee has presented the report on the floor of parliament, the committee, their work will stop there if the House have adopted the report. This House mandated the ad hoc committee to do the work, and the work was done. The report was debated. The, the report was adopted. But unfortunately, having given all that ground, this same house again went further to refer the matter to the Committee of Rules and Privileges. So that in a way, if there are issues that can be ironed out by my dear sister, Honorable Persons Namuganza, the Princess, she would have completely and so concluded. However, to our dismay, Mr. Speaker, we had been opened up to the criticism, abuse, arrogancy, and many other things on the media. Not only to the media, attacks of personality. And all along, Mr. Speaker, you know we live in this country and we live with the community where even Honorable Person Navoganza is living. To the extent that it is befit the understanding and the behaviors of elected member of parliament and a leader whom we consider that this member has to follow the code of conduct of how a leader should behave. We are supposed to be exemplary in everything that we do. Mr. Speaker, if you will allow me to quote some few things that she might have stated on the social media, and even on the, this floor of parliament, it will give you no any other ground but to move forward and say, wait a minute, why is this old this arrogancy coming from? What is the rock behind? What is intention? The only best we can do is to remove the spirit. With that spirit seem not to be a humble spirit. And the spirit does not have one thing to do. Speaker, all of us who are here are not naive of the behaviors that we have been seeing. We are not doing this to attack the personality of our dear members. We are here colleagues, but we have the mandate to perform. We have the mandate to perform, and the mandate is very clear and short and simple. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I stand here. I, won't, I, won't, I don't want to go further to say all this, Mr. Speaker. But I beg to move that, if you would permit me to lay on table the Dutchman to support the motion. Please. And I hope uh, they are endorsed by the clerk. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, allow me to lay on table first the motion for censor, which I've been going through. I beg to lay the motion for resolution of parliament to pass a vote of censor against Honorable Persons Namuganza, Princess, State Minister for Lands, Housing and Urban Development. I beg to lay one.
Mr. Speaker, I also would like to, to lay on table a notice of motion that I wrote to the Clerk of Parliament conforming to follow all the rules and the guidance that ensued before taking a step to censor or move a motion to censor a honorable person's Nabuganza. I beg to lay. Mr. Speaker, I would like also to lay on table the letter that I got from the clerk of parliament responding to the notice that I have presented to the clerk office and he wrote back to me and in, in the letter that he wrote, he indicated that the members that have signed that have signed to support the motion against Honorable Namuganza, by then it was 196. Unfortunately, when he was counting, he did not count the mover. <laughs> if he was to count me, it was going to be 197. And by that time, the period that was stipulated into our rules has not yet expired. And it responded according to our rules 109 sub clause 5. I beg to lay this letter also on the on table. Mr. Speaker, finally, I beg to lay on table the list of signatures by honorable members of the 11th parliament who took a very keen interest to study our dear sister and they found out there was a misconduct, there was some indiscipline and a lot of other issues that relate to how an honorable leader in this country should behave and they appended their signatures. By the time they gave me, the number was 197 over appended in their signatures. But again, when I went and checked, the oh, final oh, list... Honorable, you, you made this ratio. Thank you over so much. I beg to lay the right honorable you speaker. Need to, yeah. I thank you so much, thank Mr. You. Speaker, for having given me this opportunity. Thank you. To raise this motion. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, uh, my honorable colleagues, the member requested me that he has three seconders, one from the ruling side, one from the opposition, and one from independent. So, and uh, I'll start with honorable... Thank you, Reverend Speaker. And I'm standing. The reason as why... I firmly and strongly second the motion is because I am an advocate of promoting the dignity and decorum of this parliament. Right on the speaker and members, some of us were inspired to join politics and let alone parliament because we thought parliament was high above the bar. It is our responsibility as the current members of parliament to maintain that bar high. But also, right on the speaker and members, the success, effectiveness, and prestige of any institution rests on its orderly functioning and the extent of which it adheres to standards of discipline, dignity, and decorum for discharging its activities. Right on a speaker, discipline, dignity, and decorum, in this sense, are foundational norms of any institution. This is particularly so of parliamentary institutions which embody the will of the people. Right on a speaker and on members, 
The erosion of discipline and decorum will lead to erosion of parliamentary institutions. These fun, fun, uh, foundational norms of representative bodies have always been considered circle, they have been considered fundamental and are therefore preserved, protected, and defended. It is my, in, in my strong opinion, right on speaker and members, that we should stand strong in disciplining any member who tries to offend the dignity of parliament. But right on speaker, why I'm even more convinced on this motion is that the person in question is not a first offender. Analyzing her history in the previous parliament, analyzing her history with her previous supervisors, senior ministers in different ministries, this person is a perpetual offender and it's only right, it's only right for this house to put her in her right place because she serves a wrong, as a wrong example to the public and if we keep her in the position where she is, we will be demeaning the dignity, the decorum, and the standards to which, as parliament, we are expected to serve the people of this country. I beg to move. Thank Th you, Red. Thank you. Uh, Red Argo Speaker, and my colleagues, allow me to start by appreciating Honorable Amos Okot for this very important motion. Right on, Speaker, the honorable member we are talking about, I think she has been one of the luckiest ministers so far. She has taken long to be censored. <laughs> right on, Speaker, the 10th Parliament would have dealt with her, but she has been one of the luckiest ministers to survive up to this time. Right on, Speaker, the major aim and target of removing her from the office, not the minor issues that she was alluded on the other time on the floor of Parliament. As Parliament, we deal with big matters. We deal with big issues. The other issues that she was talking the other time, I think it was not called for. We are not censoring her because of our personal and individual differences with other members. But we are looking at the parliamentary institutions and our conduct as the minister. Honorable Amos put it very clearly. Right, Honorable Speaker, you remember during the Naguro land saga, when the DOC committee was given the mandate to investigate. The land matter involving 82.5 hectares of land, how the minister used our position to divide those lands among the so-called investors from our hand. And the way the minister was responding to the DOC committee, it was not convincing at all to Ugandans and to this house. Right over speaker, we are looking at big matters. The honorable minister decided to give actors of land to ourselves, to our people, and she intimidated arrogantly Uganda Land Commission using our power in the name of the president. Right on, Speaker, this minister does not survive, does not, does not deserve to survive and to continue being a minister in this August House. When we leave her, right on, Speaker, when we leave her to continue being a minister, I am very confident. Africa would laugh at Uganda. What he was doing, it was on social media everywhere. And the whole world is aware of what is going on. Therefore, we, we cannot maintain a right on speaker. And fi finally, right on speaker, finally, following our utterances on social media everywhere and demeaning demeaning the presiding officers. She is putting herself as being one of the most highest ministers so far on earth. I really feel, right over speaker, this parliament, my colleagues who signed the censor motion, I would like to applaud you, and today we are going back for Christmas very happily. 
let her go and let the process continue. I pray for the success of passing this motion moved by Honorable Court John Amos. I beg to move. Thank you. Mr. Honorable, uh, Mr. Honorable Speaker, the time she went personal insulting the Honorable Speaker was an insult to the whole house. And I believe the Honorable Minister is a Christian. In the book of Romans, it says, respect the authority. I expect her to respect the authority and stick on her line. If the problem was land issues, should have remained on land business and not going very personal, attacking a family of a respected person of our boss. Number three, and lastly, <laughs> Honorable Speaker, the name she carries, Princess, does not depict what she speaks. It couldn't cause her anything to say, I am sorry, Honorable Colleagues. Her mentioning that she regrets that was an insult to the whole house. I beg to move. Thank you, Honorable. Thank you, Honorable. Just not open up grounds for battlefield. Right, Honorable Speaker, earlier last year, I remember we all took oath. Oath of allegiance that we shall be faithful and we shall provide faithful service to the Parliament of Uganda and we shall uphold the Constitution of Uganda by protecting it. That was the oath we all took. Right, Honorable Speaker, a member of this August House, my Honorable Minister, Princess, who also took an oath then. It seems she has forgotten where she is. Right, Honorable Speaker, we are here to defend the image of Parliament. If we don't defend the image of Parliament, that means the public is going to lose confidence and trust in us. Imagine we are here in this house, we are people of different calibers and professions. We cannot be attacked by a fellow member like Honorable Princess. She's also my friend too, but from that day, when she came in this August house, and she stated whatever things she wanted to state, I don't want to be like a tsunami to be swept by her. Because she's not the person that can actually sit and we debate and we sort out matters. The same Honorable here, she has an attitude problem. Everyone, every one of us here, we all look useless to her, that is the fact. That pride in her as a woman, you should learn how to take apologies. The other day when the Right Honorable, speak, uh, the right honorable Prime Minister told her to apologize, she simply refused. What was the meaning of that? And if she cannot apologize, why does she continue to work in the same place where she was sent? Why can't she resign? Because that's the best thing to do. Therefore, Right Honorable uh, Speaker, the minister in question, we're all in the mighty party. Right, just one conclude, yeah, conclude, Honorable Colleague. Yes. Yeah. I remember she, she even went ahead to forge a letter regarding that Naguru land rango. In the Abu Dhona and Abu Kantutu's report, it is there. And if she was an ordinary member in public office, she would be off by now. But she's a minister. I wondered what she's still doing in that office if she can still use her office to abuse the parliament she works in. So I think, members, she's accountable, and it's high time we all rise together to defend the image of this parliament. Because if we don't, imagine you are going to go outside there in public events, you are going to attend events, people are going to analyze you, and we shall all look unserious. We cannot accept that nonsense to be taking place in this parliament. Right, Honorable Speaker, thank you. Uh, Honorable, our court I had allowed gifts. This season of Christmas in the Republic of Uganda is me macho, the member of parliament for Psia Municipality, to second humbly this motion that the 
minister in question, Namuganza, passes, should be given back to the appointing authority as a gift to Ugandans to demonstrate that truly our dear president is having a burden with some of his people in the executive to manage. Mr. Speaker, sir, why I call a burden? I saw the right honorable prime minister of the Republic of Uganda struggling, suffering, talking all the sweet soft words on floor of parliament, pleading over a minister to apologize. Mr. Speaker, sir, and my colleagues, that did not end there. It made the right honorable prime minister of the Republic of Uganda move out, and I saw her fighting with microphones, with microphones, blocking journalists so that the minister of state should not address the media. That shows a sign that the minister in question has no values of being a humble leader. And she lacks humility as one of the key values of a leader. But Mr. Speaker, sir, this is not by surprise. The minister in question, when I was a youth chairman of Busia district, she was a secretary for female youth for her district. And the character she's exhibiting now was the same character she used to exhibit. I therefore see, Mr. Speaker, and my colleagues, that the only solution, what we do where I come from, when you fail to manage any person, you take back the owner. Good enough, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that we have very many royal, humble NRM cadres who can be ministers, who even worked harder. We have folks or doys who are here, who can be very good ministers. We even have some colleagues in the house, like Honorable Kamara, who are willing to join NRM to become ministers. <laughs> My colleagues, what we are doing is a noble cause. We are rebranding. We are rebranding the executive so that NRM can become a mighty party with a new breed and a new fish in the dock. I do submit and recommend and I request the Ugandans that this gift that we are bringing back receive it warmly with the two hands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Order. Thank you. Honorable point of order applies when uh, a member is still holding the floor. So once there is no one on the floor, please, please, you don't access the microphone without my permission. Yeah. Please. Procedure. Uh, no, that's not how we work. That's not how we work. That's not how we work. Yes, uh, colleagues. Colleagues, you've. Uh, no. Uh, honorable, you have. Po no, Honorable, rules allow you to give uh, a statement of personal explanation. So you can come to my office, I'll give you space. You reject a ministry offer from Honorable Macho. <laughs> but let me allow you. Let's allow Honorable Mr. Macho. Speaker. Uh, Honorable Tinka, let's allow Honorable Dr. Kamara. Thank you. Right, Honorable Speaker. State on record that I am a very proud member of FDC. <laughs> and I'm not about to join the so-called mighty party of NRM. I'm FDC. That's what I wanted to put Thank clear you. Thank you. to my voters and all Ugandans. Thank you so much. So you reject Honor Macho's offer. <laughs> uh, which read that a member may, with the consent of the speaker, move that a rule be suspended in the application to a particular motion before the House. And in, if the motion is carried, the rule in question shall be suspended. Uh, sub rule two. Uh, the rule that I seek that we suspend of this house is rule 107 that provides for the procedure, a long procedure of uh, uh, disposing of essential motion of a minister. Uh, uh, right Honorable Speaker, when you read sub rule 
subrule 2 of rule 16 provides that the rules which cannot be suspended and rule 109 is not one of these rules provided for uh, right honorable speaker I plead with you and seek your consent that this matter as you see the temple in the house be disposed of today I beg to submit thank you uh, uh, honorable thinker rule 107 of our rules of procedure talks about removal of the president, not removal of the minister. The minister is... Uh, no, you, you, you requested for 107. So uh, the minister is 109, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and of course with that... Uh, I can allow you to make your correction. Right Honorable Speaker, my rule that I sought to suspend is 109. Zero okay, thank you. For okay. avoidance of doubt, the yeah. title is Vote of Censure Against Ministers. Yeah, of course I knew. I knew, but I wanted to correct you. Much obliged. Much yeah. obliged. Thank you. Uh, colleagues, for those who have not yet picked the new rules, please pick the new rules. Because we amended the rules, so I can understand... Uh, uh, no, I can understand the challenge. Now, uh, honorable colleague, please, like, like enough you say with the consent of the speaker. This is a very serious matter that is also clearly provided for under Article 118 of the Constitution. So the moment I just refer to the rules only, and yet the Constitution gives a very clear procedure, I think we shall be arming someone to say you never proceeded the right procedure to process the motion. So uh, I would request uh, you agree with me, Honorable Tinker, that indeed we don't suspend the rule. We follow the procedure as laid out uh, in the Constitution and rules of procedure. Uh, so colleagues, uh, with that being done, I'm going to inform the President within 72 hours, and then after 14 days, we shall appoint a select committee uh, which shall uh, process the motion and listen to the Honorable Namuganza, where she will appear either in person or with her lawyer and ensure that indeed she responds to the issues in the petition. Uh, uh, colleagues, we are breaking off for Christmas. This is the last session before Christmas. But as you know, tomorrow we have the burial of our colleague in Serere, and there is the transport provided. Uh, Honorable Cooper, you can guide on that issue, on, on the issue of transport. The burial is stated for tomorrow. As we speak now, I want to update also the house that this the body has safely arrived in Soroti at the Iteso Cultural Center. So it will be just 17 kilometers to, to home, or 17 miles. Right, Honorable Speaker, tomorrow there will be transport in the parliament here. Those who will use to group transport at 6 AM. Uh, the director of transport, Mr. Pata, is coordinating it. So there will be transport here. Uh, those who may drive their cars, you can go through Palsa, Shota, to Kumi, and then to Ngora, and then to the place of burial in the Ochapa Town Council. But if you went up to Soroti Town, you take the Soroti Serre Road, 17 miles, 17 miles to, to Serere, and it's just about three kilometers from uh, uh, Serere District Headquarters. If you are flying, you land in Olio Primary School. That's a more secure place which has been secured for those who will be flying. <laughs> uh, because I, I, I got a request from some colleagues who are saying they may fly in the chopper, so that's the place you can land to. So right honorable speaker, or Leo Primary School. So right honorable speaker, we want to invite you all to Serere to say farewell to our brother. But right honorable speaker, but right honorable speaker, like I said yesterday, 
I think the Minister of Internal Affairs needs to come up with a full report about the incident. So we will, we will ask the Minister of Internal Affairs to follow that because it is something that's raising some issues. Sure. We, we don't want to happen to... like for Abiriga. We don't want that type of thing to happen in Serere. So, right, Lord Speaker, we want to thank you and we pray that the Almighty God takes us safely to Serere and safely back here and rest the soul of our late brother and the wife in life eternity. Thank, thank you so you. much, right, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, uh, Honorable Cooper. Our colleagues, chairpersons, and leadership of uh, sector committees, uh, you have up to 20th of January to present to the budget committee your reports on the budget framework paper. So meaning, immediate after Christmas, committees should resume a sitting. Now, priority, priority is going to be given to sector committees. I request standing committees, uh, please don't conflict with the sector committees because members belong to both standing and sector. Let us use this general period to focus on the budget whereby we shall only be having uh, sector committees uh, uh, sitting. Uh, with that, colleagues, I wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I, I'd done the house sign dial.